Hi, it's Andy. Hi, it's Dave. Hi, it's Kurt. Welcome to the ADK Rock and Metal channel. Yeah. And today we are reviewing the new album Telos by the band Kadama. What's the details on this particular album? This is released on the 2nd of August. It's a self-release. And Kadama are a band from St. Albans, Hertfordshire. And some members are also from London. And should we give a taste though to the viewers? Technical groove metal, which probably doesn't exist as a subgenre. I don't even know if I'd call it that. Thrash metal, we'll come to it though. We'll come we? to our own, our own interpretations on this one. But yeah. um, we've all had a chance to listen to this album. I don't know how many times each of us have listened to it, but uh, let's go through it. I think we'll all take our own stance on it, and then at the end we'll give you our scoring out of our four main topical categories, if you like. Uh, Andy, your thoughts on this album? Um, yeah, th this band are excellent live. We've seen them several times more, most recently in uh, Hitchens Metal to the Masses competition where they made the final. So they're absolutely amazing live you know well worth making an effort to come and see them live because they're absolutely fantastic i was really looking forward to reviewing the album because um the, the ones that stood out for me are, are the, sort of the four openers which are part of the live set so they were most familiar and, and sort of most sort of interesting for mm. me but i mean <coughs> overall the, the 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 musicianship the songwriting the recording it, it's just absolutely top notch from from a you know self-released band as you said kirk sorry a self-released album you know, the, the, the quality that you find on this album is absolutely, you know, really, really high. Um, some sort of, sort of influences, I mean, we, we talked about briefly the, the sort of style it falls into. It's all, always difficult. I mean, their, their own sort of press pack says groove metal. Modern metal, I think, is, is more of an appropriate term. But whether that is accurate to encompass what this band produces, it's very, very difficult. But there's, there's thrash elements and, and whatever. Mm. Um, also, I don't know if you agree, that for me, there's, there's the occasional sort of black metal element um the vocals okay. are sort of in that sort of mid to high sort of range at times uh, there's a few blast beats and, and you know it reminds me of, sort of early emperor and the, the vocalist there is ilson is that how you say it the vocalist He's not, um, yeah I think it. yeah emperor vocalist um and another sort of standout sort of comparison was, was lamb of god as well at times there's some real sort of lamb of god moments you know musically and vocally but yeah really really good album one thing that not not key for me, but one one element that that sort of wasn't a distraction that maybe for some people, no solos, apart from one, you know, and it wasn't wasn't missing them if you know what I mean. The one that was there suited the song and everything. It wasn't, but you know that that's something I took out from the album as being it's unusual because I'm sure both guitarists James and Mike could pull off a solo any time they like, you know, but they they chose not to include that in in this band's music, which I think is. Not a bad thing at all, and certainly doesn't take anything away from it from, from my point of view. But I mean, we've got you know different time signatures, different time changes. There's slow, uh, sort of chuggy sort of passages. There's really fast bits with blast beats. There's so much there, and it you know there's so much to take in. Ten fantastic songs. But I mean, the the ones for me are the sort of you know the opener, weight of attrition, and mark of uh, titans. You know, sort of live favourites I can recall from <coughs> their recent sets. Mm. So. Really, really enjoyed it, and very well done. You know, excellent from, as I say, the songwriting to the production and everything in between. Okay. Um, so I remember us when we talked about Astral Blood and how that they were when we when we did the video review. We talked about how they are better live than they are on the album uh, because it's just so intense live, and the and Astral Blood didn't really portray that. When we when we did the video, uh, and I actually think Astral Blood is one of the weakest songs on the album overall. It doesn't have the weight or production that the others do for some reason. It just feels a bit thin. Uh, the other songs stand up a lot better. Um, I think I listened to the, when I went through the album the first time. I was incredibly disappointed by the album. Oh really? So because I couldn't remember a single riff out of the album. There was just too many riffs. There was no hook. So this is a this is an album for me that's written by the guitarist. This is there are so many riffs and there are so many good riffs in this, um, but I couldn't tell you a single chorus out of this entire album. There is no hooky choruses. That they, it's, like, it's like they've automatically tried to avoid doing anything commercial or generic as far as instantly memorable hooks. So from a guitar hook point of view, from a vocal hook melody, there is none of that in this album. 
And I don't know if that's intentional, that they've tried to stay away from doing anything like that. But even bands like Lamb of God and Kill Switch Engage and stuff like that, they have those hook, hooky melodies that you kind of go, ah, oh, you can, as an audience, you can kind of go, hands up in the air and you sing that chorus. We think about other bands in our scene that do that. So Sentient, when they kick into Gaslighter, everyone in the audience, Gaslighter. There is none of that with Kadama. There isn't. I don't remember a bit when they did their Melt to the Masses final that the crowd sang along to any of the choruses because there isn't any. Yeah. And I think that's a big mistake by the band because it took me two or three or four listens before I could actually start to pick out songs that I liked and I had to work. And then after once I got them in my head and I could finally get the structures and how the songs were flowing, I was like, that's a really good track. That's a really good track. I really like the riffs here. I can see that this feels to me like Mike has sat in a room and I could almost hear that's a Mike riff. And this is this song was written by Mike and he sat there with a drum machine and programmed and dragged and dropped drum samples in. And then they went off and learned it in the studio. That's how it felt listening to it to me. Um, saying that, I loved Mark of Titans. Uh, All We Have Is Now, Control and Dead of Night was my favourite. I loved Dead of Night. I thought it was sounding very different to the rest of the album. It had some really interesting time signatures. Got away from that constant double kicking or that constant kind of riffage that we kind of accepted as Kadama's live. I don't remember Dead of Night ever being played live, which is a real shame because it's got real weight. It's got slowness. One of my favourites as well, actually. I should have said that, yeah. Um... The other thing that I think is a, a challenge for this album is I find the vocals are one-dimensional. He does one thing, he does it incredibly well, but every song vocally is delivered exactly the same way. I've got variation in vocals. Really? Yeah. I hate oh, Not a I huge hate. amount, but there is variation in vocals across the songs. He does Randy Blythe's Lamb of God, and he does it, or a bit of Jesse from Kill Switch, but Jesse from Kill Switch does a clean variety. Which, remember, we blame them for inventing that clean chorus metal car kill switch engage but there's no chorus there is no chorus i'm sure there are choruses but everything felt like to me listening to this album was here's a <clears> verse <throat> here's a pre-chorus we'll go back to the verse we'll do a bit of a breakdown thing then we'll kick back into another verse and then we'll wrap the song up and then we'll do the next song and we'll go intro verse and there was a couple of in there that i really liked where like second sight for instance second sight if you take out like some of the chugging riffs underneath the chords that he uses that sound like an 80s classic rock metal band. Yeah, I noticed that, like Annihilator. I was like, yeah, I was like, oh my God, there's some really good ideas yeah. here. But Old school thrash, wasn't it? So yeah. from a first kind of album from this band, I know they've done singles, etc., like Roulette as well. Um, I think it's a great benchmark, but I think for the next one after this, I need to see some encapsulation of more skills in there. I'd love to hear something that... Because at the moment, if you ask me to tell you how any of those songs go, couldn't sing a single melody line out of any of these tracks right now. Dave, can I just sort of jump in there? Yeah. I think you're absolutely right, because I think when you were talking to me about trying to cut in my footage from the final into, into, <laughs> into your footage, you really struggled. I couldn't I couldn't work out which song was from which. Yeah. And, and also, the moment, I, the moment I listened to this album and done my notes for the fourth time, I put my clips from the um, semi-final of Kadama on, on my TikTok. And even at that point, I couldn't put the names to the songs. Yeah. You know, they're, they're just... They're, 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 I mean, they're, in the moment, they're great riffs. Yeah, yeah. And but, you felt you yourself... But I, can't, I, I couldn't remember, oh yeah, this is a clip from Mark of Titans, even yeah. though I'd probably just listened to it 10 minutes before. So you're right about the sort of... The, the hooky choruses and the, and the memorable mm. riffs and everything, but that doesn't, for me, doesn't take away the, the, the songs. You know? No, there's, there's great ability there. And yeah. listening to them in that moment, in the moment, they're really good. But if you're trying to then build a new audience, you've got to have some hooky, you've got to have a, a moment where the band goes, oh, I fucking love that track because it, go, it goes in your head. Yeah. Because there were points when I was listening to this, I was like, do you know what? It reminds me a little bit of like Jackal's Backbone at certain points. There's some death metal in there, there's metalcore, there's thrash metal. You can hear other bands in there, but even when you talk about something like Jackal's Backbone, there's hooks. You know some of their songs and you'll know there's a hook. I, I struggled to find a hook on this album. And that was, I don't know if that's intentional, but I think it's a risk. I don't know if that will pay off for the band by not having a hook to build a new audience. That's my thought on that one. Kurt? Yeah, I'll address both points. Um, so 
Uh, and they said they don't play guitar solos. You never get a guitar solo in a Meshuga or Gajira song, and they're two big influences. So the mm. music's technical enough from a rhythmic point of view where they don't need to throw in a guitar solo, and Periphery don't even play that many guitar solos. Um, getting back to two of the main influences, Meshuga and Gajira, none of them write <coughs> choruses. They don't feel the need to. It's really about ritual repetition with that music. And it can be monotonous to some people. Mm. Meshuggah, notoriously, you need to be, honestly, I don't think anyone gets that music at first. I remember first hearing Destroy Your Raids Improve and it must have taken me a year to get my head around it because it's subtle. You're like, it seems to be complex, but there's a lot of repetition. When we use the word repetition, we don't mean that in a negative sense in this type of metal. It's bludgeoning music. I would say that it is Lamb of God, early Lamb of God meets Silosis. I think would okay. be a good reference point, and you've mentioned that previously as well, that you could hear that in their music. Mm. The vocals, again, Jens Kidman of Meshuggah, there is no variation. You just get him barking into the microphone. Same when you listen to Joe Diplantia of Gojira, never sings. It's quite a, like a gruff voice. There are some choruses in there, but they're not designed to be anthemic. So I don't see that as a weakness because it depends okay. what you expect of this yeah, band yeah. and, and the, their influences. Technically, I would say this is a superb album. I love the production. You write Mike Goring and James Lamb have written most of these songs. The guitar interplay is superb. I'll give you an example. The opener, Weight of Attrition, those dissonant chords in the beginning. I think it's 20 seconds and the drummer feels his way in and then it just launches into a thrash metal riff. Mm. I would actually say it probably is a, a, a groove metal, a post-thrash album. I think once you down-tune your guitars as low as this, Clearly, you're not going to sound like Megadeth or Metallica, but they're still playing some of the techniques. There's a lot of double kick beats, sorry, skank beats in there. Yeah. The drumming is sensational on this record, and they've really captured the weight. And it's not overly compressed, in my opinion. I think they've really mm. they've got a good growl to the bass as well. I'm always using that word, but you can clearly hear it, and you should do. When you're down tuning like this, the low end is very important. I would say the standout songs, well, I'll address Astral Blood. To me, I just put, if this isn't thrash metal, what is? And it, it kind of, Neil Bailey's vocals are there. The effect I get from this is I just feel like I've got a permanent gurn, grimace on my face, you know, like eyeing someone up. You just feel like you can crush people. You feel like you could just overturn a fucking motorway bridge with your hands, listen to invincible metal music like this. No, it is. That's the, I call it the Meshuggah suffering truth effect. When you listen to that song, and if you're a short guy like me who's five foot five, yeah. you put that music on, you feel like you're six foot five. And I think that's deliberate here. In terms of side B of this record, I think this is one of the few times where 10 bangers with no variation is fine. Most extreme metal or tech metal records do need variation. This isn't one of those records. Okay. 10 songs straight out of the traps. It's like a bullet between the eyes, but there is a lot of complexity here that's subtle. And as you said, they don't need guitar solos. I think the the interplay between the drums and, and the guitars are really fascinating on this record. Neil Bailey's job is just to go in there and bark into the microphone like Jens Kidman of Meshuggah. So I, I, I'm pleased there weren't any of those clean choruses and I think that would have ruined the music and it would have revealed, it made it too obvious that they're influenced by Killswitch and Gage. Uh, so, I mean, we have that question, is this technical groove metal, modern thrash? Um, is there such thing as modern metal? I think that's meaningless, that term, that can describe anything. So whenever I see that in a press pack, modern metal, that seems to be a special case of pleading, or oh, we're different. What yeah. actually distinguishes this record? So, I don't know, he's going to tell us though, apparently. Yeah, that, that's a rhetorical question. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, would, I would say that they've, they've managed to actually get the songs down to four minutes, four and a half minutes. It's not anchored to a chorus, and that's deliberately so. You like the panned guitar effects, Andy, when we listen to Thrash Metal, and they do that quite well. You know, at the beginning, they'll kind of sketch out what the main riff's going to be. All the band will come in, and then they'll just reset to something different. So they're always second-guessing you. I think it's just one of those that makes you feel invincible. Chunky guitarists. <coughs> it is an album for guitarists, isn't it? Let's be honest. Yeah, just dozens as, and dozens of them, isn't it? Yeah, mm. just as Meshuggah is an album for musicians uh, who study music theory. You know, you have a certain niche. With this, I don't think they've taken a risk because they never intended to be one of those metalcore bands with anthemic, but for my Valentine 
or trivium choruses. That's not what they're about. Yeah. Do they need to expand on the next record? I would argue no, because they know what they are. There is an audience for this. It is probably people, it is definitely people like me. I don't go into a Meshuga or Gojira album and think, where are the choruses? Mm. I just think, you know, is this fucking chunky metal? Does it make me feel invincible? And does it make my veins throb in my temple and give me that eye bulging? Rage, and this certainly does. So I'm um, big fan of this record and really like the uh, audio engineering job that they've done on it. Okay. Well, we need to score it. So we score it out of uh, four categories. Uh, so we have it, if it's a, we think it's an awful album, we call it a Bennett. If we think it's not for us, but we would give it to someone else and trade it for something we like, it would be a trade it. It could either be a stream it or it can be a buy it. Andy, what's your rating for this album? Um, before I do that, just, just one more reference that I've, I've got to say. Anyone pick up on sort of Swan Song era carcass in the, in the guitar tone and on it. a couple of tracks? Maybe not. Not really. Okay. Cut that the other day. <laughs> no, no, I mean, See, it's... Did anyone at home? <laughs> yeah. 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 No, that's a refreshing perspective. I yeah. didn't pick up on it. Yeah, particularly Fractured Line, I'll note it down for that. And um, there's another one on there, but I can't see in my notes. But yeah, re- you know, as I said, absolutely fantastic. I really, really enjoyed it. Take on board everything you said, you know, both of you sort of perspectives, kind of differing views on, on sort of the sort of uh, the hookiness of it. Because I've noted down there are some hooky mm. riffs, but not that, the, uh, as you say, in the moment. And if you get familiar with the songs, you, you know they're coming. But as you say, thinking back now, can you recall a chorus? Can you recall a, a particular riff? I, I can't. So I read the title of the song and then go, can you sing what the chorus line was? I'm like, no, not really, no. no. I mean the the opening of weight of attrition. You mentioned it, Kurt. It was it was um, just single guitar, and then the vocals and band join in. Mm. At that point, I thought that was an unusual sort of a, you know sort of way of constructing the song. I really really like that. But um, going back to my my score, pleased to say they're going to do physical copies, and I'll certainly be buying one. So it's a buy it from me. Okay. Uh, for me, it'll just be a stream it. Uh, I think it's worth uh, going through them track by track and picking out the songs that you like. Uh, there were kind of five songs off this 10 song album that I would generally go back and listen to again. The other five were, they just, I've listened to the album four or five times now and they just haven't resonated with me in any way. So uh, it's a stream it from me. Yeah, it's definitely a buy it for me. One of the easiest records to review this year. Um, there's a song on it called Second Sight and I always judge mm. the quality of a of a metal band's guitar riffs by that 1994 prong record yeah. cleansing and this is definitely at the same standard the imagination in there you're right it's not actually easy to remember a lot of them after one listen because they're quite complex and they seem to stretch beyond eight bars don't they a lot it's of them. not instantly accessible um but yeah this is a lot to unpack here but i think that with me unlike you straight away it just grabbed me and right. it's, it's probably because i i do listen to a lot of the bands that have influenced this record so yeah, definite buy it from me. Okay, so there we go, Kadama and Telos, and it gets a buy it from the ADK Rock and Metal channel. If you enjoyed our video today, please do like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you on another video sometime very soon. Take care.